tap.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the friendliest city in America, in Military Bay, USA, beautiful Tampa, Florida, and the commissioning of USS Jack H. Lucas, DDG-125. I am Commander Matthew Klein, the ship's executive officer. It's my privilege to be your master of ceremonies today. We welcome those with us in person and our friends and family as they participate in today's event via the World Wide Web, including members of the Lucas family who are attending a watch party in Jack Lucas's hometown of Plymouth, North Carolina. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, we present America's finest, the United States Marine Corps Silent Drill Team.
We are here today to commission the first ship to bear the name United States Marine and Medal of Honor recipient, Private First Class Jack H. Lucas. This crew is poised and ready to continue the proud legacy of a truly indestructible hero. And like Jack Lucas, we will be willing to enter the breach when called upon by our nation. We are honored to have fellow Marine and Medal of Honor recipient, Colonel Harvey C. Barney Barnum Jr. with us today. <laughs> Colonel Barnum, please stand and be recognized. Would all active duty and veterans please stand. Would all military families please stand. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your service and sacrifice. Please be seated. Our ceremony today is a time-honored tradition that began with the commissioning of our first warship, a captured British schooner, the Margareta, in 1775. Since then, thousands of ships have undergone the transformation from silent hulls to fully alive warships. Our commissioning crew, hereafter known as plank owners, are in formation among you and ready to bring our ship to life. In just a few moments, Navy Band Southeast will render honor to the Honorable Kathy Castor. Will the guests please rise and remain standing for the arrival of our official party, honors, presentation of colors, and our national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, our platform guests. Lieutenant Janet R. Clark, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy, and Commander Don Beadog, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy retired, our ceremony chaplains. <laughs> Mr. Skip Witunski, and the Honorable Paul Anderson, co-chairs, USS Jack H. Lucas Commissioning Committee. <laughs> Ms. Barbara Albritton, Dr. Emily Davis, and Ms. Tara Gunsorchik, our matrons of honor. Mr. Lewis Lucas, our long glass presenter. <laughs> Captain Randy Slaff, United States Navy Supervisor of Shipbuilding Gulf Coast. Captain Seth Miller, United States Navy, DDG 51 Class, Shipbuilding Program Manager. <laughs> Ms. Jill Boward, Executive Director, Combatants, Program Executive Office, Ships. Ms. Carrie Wilkinson, Executive Vice President, HII, and President Ingalls Shipbuilding. <laughs> the Honorable Jane Castor, Mayor, City of Tampa, Florida. <laughs> Sir.
Sergeant Major Carlos Ruiz, United States Marine Corps, the Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps. Admiral Daryl Cottle, United States Navy, Commander, United States Fleet Forces Command. The Honorable Eric Raven, Under Secretary of the Navy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our ship sponsors, Ms. Ruby Lucas and Ms. Catherine B. Reynolds, escorted today by Master Chief Don Brockman, USS Jack H. Lucas's Command Master Chief. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Kathy Castor, United States Representative, Florida's 14th District, escorted today by Captain Brett Oster, United States Navy, USS Jack H. Lucas's commanding officer. Ladies and gentlemen, honors to the Honorable Kathy Castor. Platform, hand salute. Platform, ready, two. Advance the colors. Platform, hand salute.
retire the colors. Platform, ready, two. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Clark will now deliver the invocation. Commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. The heart of a man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for your presence and ask your blessing on us gathered here to commission the USS Jack H. Lucas into service. We commit to you the work of her creation and ask you to establish her steps in service for good. In this moment, the past, the present, and the future converge. We reflect to honor the great shoulders on whom we stand while capturing the latest technology has to offer to project our hope into the future that with your help, it will be more peaceful through strength to hold the line against its threats. But a mass of steel and technology is just an object until it is brought to life. The imagination of its designers enabling builders to craft the vessel into shape, now we hand over to the crew whose souls will man its stations. From today, may she be alive with Navy spirit and serve us well. God grant Captain Oster, Commander Klein, and CMC Brockman your wisdom to lead with firm direction, tempered with grace and mercy. We pray protection over all who serve on the Jack Lucas and whoever will and their loved ones who will keep the home fires burning. Lord, we also pray for our nation and we pray for the conflicts raging around the world even as we speak. We pray this in your name, amen. Thank you, Chaplain Clark. We would like to thank the United States Marine Corps Silent Drill Team, the Navy Band Southeast, our own USS Jack H. Lucas Color Guard, Technical Sergeant Sonia Bryson Kirksky, United States Air Force retired, and HSM 48 Vipers from Naval Air Station Mayport, Florida for their support today. <laughs> Additionally, we would like to thank and acknowledge the City of Tampa, Florida, Port Tampa Bay, and their amazing team, and especially the Jack H. Lucas Commissioning Committee for their generosity and tremendous support. Will the guests please be seated? Ship's Company, Parade Rest. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Jane Castor. On behalf of the city of Tampa, I am truly honored today to welcome everyone who has joined us in person and who is watching vir virtually. I would also like to thank our congressional representative, Kathy Castor, and also our port executive director, Paul Anderson, uh, for their unwavering commitment to bringing this to fruition today. And thank you, Under Secretary Raven, for uh, attending this auspicious event in our wonderful city. As the home of MacDill Air Force Base, CENTCOM, and SOCOM, Tam Tampa has long been an Air Force community, a Central Command community, and today we are a Navy and Marine community. <laughs> Hoorah! The USS Jack H. Lucas commemorates World War II's youngest Medal of Honor winner, Jack Lucas. World War II was a conflict in which an entire generation of heroes saved the world from 
auth I'm sorry, authoritarianism, authoritarianism. Jack Lucas was one of the greatest, the bravest, and the most indestructible of servants. And today, many of these generations of heroes will be making this ship named in his honor their home as they sail the globe to protect our country. The challenges facing this generation of sailors will be different, but bravery, resilience, and undying spirit are still the same. This ship's beauty and strength represents the honor, the commitment, and determination of a country that stands for freedom. Thank you, Captain Brett Oster, Executive Officers Klein and Brockman, and the U.S. Navy for holding this important event in our wonderful city of Tampa. To the sailors, never lose sight of the service and sacrifice of Jack Lucas. Ensure that you live up to the standards set by him and so many other brave men and women. On behalf of the city of Tampa and a grateful nation, I wish each of you Godspeed. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Castor. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Carrie Wilkinson. Good morning. Good morning to everyone and what an honor it is to be here today. To those with whom I have the privilege of sharing this platform, a humble thank you for your service and dedication to this effort and our unique industry. Thank you for including your shipbuilders in the events of this important day. To our sponsors, it is a tremendous and special honor for us to be with you again. It seems like yesterday, and yet a decade ago, that we christened this ship in Pascagoula, Mississippi. To the crew and your families, the sacrifices you make and what you do for our nation are the inspiration for what shipbuilders do as a way of life, and we draw energy each day knowing that we are building not just the tools of keeping peace, but also your home away from home. And to my fellow shipbuilders here today, and back home on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. In addition to the bigger in mission and purpose we serve, you are my inspiration each day in our drive to support these resilient and dedicated men and women of our United States Navy and Marine Corps. This morning I'd like to share a story with you from not that long ago when the ship was still in the shipyard in Pascagoula. We were touring the ship with a guest around the time of sea trials as we had done so many times at that point in construction. But on this, on this tour and on this day, I remember being distracted. Usually on tours, we talk about the importance of the capability that this particular ship will bring, about the stage of construction, about the excellent collaboration that brought us to that point in construction, or about the opportunities and lessons learned going forward. But on this occasion, all of that faded into the background and I began to notice the shift. More on that in just a minute. For shipbuilders, at least in my experience, the personality of any ship changes over time, similar to people. You see, the keel laying begins the celebration of the namesake and our sponsors and all the special qualities they bring to the ship, establishing her character. After that, shipbuilders steadily work to erect units, install pipe, pull cable, land machinery and equipment, and build her up from the ground and into the sky. By the time the ship is fully integrated and preparing to launch, she is indeed taking on a life of her own. The smell of well, the sound of work being done, temporary ventilation, 1MC, all create a beautiful background cacophony of progress and the promise of light off events to come. Then comes launch. The ship is stripped clean, lines pulled, and lines repulled once pure side again. And she begins the next part of her now waterborne journey. Going after the test program in earnest, her life sets out at a new pace. One driven by system completion, compartment inspections, and plan of the day meetings, aligning the priorities and activities of hundreds, and in some cases thousands, of shipbuilders on that one ship to make the progress and get to sea. And finally, the last couple of months before going to sea, when shipbuilders are tired after long days and even longer nights, we begin to feel the euphoria and second wind required to get her to sea. An intoxicating mix of sounds and smells, alarms and bells as systems are demonstrated, fresh non-skid, paint and running engines, compel us to the day we are declared clear for sea and the next morning when the gangway is pulled and the ship is at last underway. This is the time we begin to reflect on our journey as shipbuilders and feel, if only for a moment, 
that sense of accomplishment that only exhaustion brings. But then already begin to look ahead to the next ship in the line where we have the opportunity to do it all over again and do it even better in support of our sailors and Marines in our country. As shipbuilders, we turn steel into bones and wrap skin around them. We work with our supplier partners to add muscle through the installation of prime movers, equipment, and machinery. We support our integration and combat system partners by pulling cable and hooking up consoles to create a central nervous system. And we all work together through testing and demonstrating systems to prove that she is nimble enough to conduct her missions effectively. So back to our tour on that day. I realized I was listening to a new hum, that of sailors moving about the passageways around us and talking in terms only they understand as the crew of this, the first Flight 3 Arleigh Burke class destroyer. And then it fully settled in for me in a more profound way than it had on so many of our ships before. While our namesake and our sponsors impart their character and spirit to this great ship, it is the sailors that are her heart and soul and bring her to life. So to the men and women of Jack H. Lucas, DDG-125, it is an honor to serve you, and we look forward to watching the spectacular things you will do on your most important future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wilkinson. Ladies and gentlemen, Sergeant Major Carlos Ruiz. Good morning. Really? Good morning. I'm going to take off my cover. Is that OK with you? What would possess you? I was sitting right here, and I'm watching you. And it's hot. It's so hot. Just say it. Say it. So hot. Say it. And so I'm, I'm having a conversation in my head. I'm like, what would possess all of you to come here this morning? Right? And the same thought came last night at the reception for this beautiful thing. Everyone that I met, everyone that I touched hands with, what I got from them was how passionate they were, they are, about their service. Whether they served in the uniform, or as a civilian, or building something, creating something, that's what I get from you. You knew what the weather was gonna be like. You knew how hot it was gonna be. You prayed for one little cloud to come over the sun. It's not here. And you stay, and you stay. I'm gonna to talk to you from the lens of a sergeant major, because we're talking about a private first class enlisted. Can I get a oorah? Good. That was not bad, actually. If I can just image you through something, much like this, you're in boxes. See, you're in, bo you're in a box. Everywhere around the country this morning, in every marine installation or naval installation, a senior marine gets in front of a box a formation. And if they're looking at young men and women, true volunteers, they show up every morning. And we look at them, back at them as, OK, today's training events will be. This is how we will accomplish that. And we do our very best to bring everyone along to a certain standard. I'm watching them. They're watching me. I am evaluating them, they're evaluating me. And every once in a while, very rare, like a streak of lightning, someone comes along. Someone who disturbs the whole process. You're supposed to stand in formation. You're supposed to stay quiet. You're supposed to follow the rules and regulations. You know where I'm going with this, right? There's something special about that person Mrs. Lucas, I think that was your husband. A maverick. A maverick. And to be completely honest with you, as a first sergeant of Marines, if PFC Lucas was in my formation, he would be a pain in my side. He would. Why? He's not following the rules. This is what you signed up for. But what ends up happening is that everyone rallies around one person. One person can elevate 
the standard no matter what organization you belong to. One person. One person shines their shoes, next thing you know, three shine their shoes. It's a beautiful thing to watch. And it happens every day, but not the maverick. If Lucas, if Lucas, his actions were to multiply across the platoon, missing in action, going unauthorized absences, the non-judicial punishments that he went through, hiding his age, we wouldn't have a good Marine Corps at all. But because he did those things, because he took a chance, because much like you, there's something gripping you to come here today. Some, something inside your soul saying, I should be here this morning. Something inside PC Lucas' soul said, I need to get to the fight. And fight he did. No matter how he would get there, he figured it out. This thing, this steel thing behind me, for an outsider, said, what are you doing? What is this all about? Where are you going? I don't understand. Why would we pay such huge attention to a piece of steel floating on water? For you in the audience and the people behind me, we all know that it's not just a piece of steel. It is a place, it is a weapon system first, but it could also be in the defensive position, defending the onslaught of war, defending the crew. It could be employed in the offensive position with great power and precision. It can be a line of supply, so Marines, soldiers, whatever, could fight just one more day. It could be hope, because everyone on the field gave everything they had. For the crew, it's a home away from home. And great stories will be told inside these holes. And they won't be for public consumption, right? They just won't. They stay. It's a beautiful thing. The Navy and the Marine Corps team, our destinies are intertwined. We will depend on, on each other for a very long time to come. The name, the ship, represents the perseverance of Americans. Can I get a hurrah? It is a beautiful thing to feel, not to watch. This thing behind me, this beautiful ship, represents the grit, the determination of enlisted Marines, enlisted sailor, sailors, and really all of its crew, that we will not give up until we win. The next time you see this beautiful thing, if he takes the personality of PFC, Jack, Lucas, this is the last thing it's gonna be clean. <laughs> it's gonna find its way somewhere to make a difference. I encourage you to continue to support the military community. The news cycle will tell you that the propensity to serve is no longer there and I look at you, and I say we're okay. And so from every Marine in every corner of the globe, forward deployed or at home base, from the Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, from the Commandant of the Marine Corps, thank you, Semper Fi. Thank you, Sergeant Major Ruiz. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Kathy Castor. Good morning, Secretary Raven, Captain Oster, Attorney General of Moody, Mayor Castor, Sheriff Cronister. On behalf of a patriotic Tampa Bay community and Congresswoman Lee and Luna, who are also in attendance today, we rise on this momentous morning to commission the newest jewel in our Navy fleet. 
Thank you, Port Tampa Bay and Port Director Paul Anderson for spearheading this uh, event and allowing our neighbors to tour this impressive vessel. There is no better place for this ceremony than the Tampa Bay community, a community that is rich with military service members and veterans. Thank you to all of the service members and their families and veterans who are here today. We are grateful and proud of you for your service to this nation. We're also a community rich with history. We're just a stone's throw from the historic Fort, Fort Brook of the 1800s. Also, the encampment in 1898 of Teddy Roosevelt and the Rough Riders at what is now University of Tampa. To the modern MacDill Air Force Base, home of Special Operations Command and Central Command. This is also a community that every year repels marauding pirates. So it's with that spirit we set you on a, found, a sound foundation to launch. This magnificent vessel is more than just steel and technology. It embodies the dedication, sacrifice, and expertise of countless of Americans who have worked tirelessly to bring her to life, and the sailors who embody the values we cherish and our commitment to freedom. As we commission her into service, yes, we add a formidable asset to our national defense, but we also embrace a responsibility a responsibility to uphold the values that define us as a nation, often expressed by the United States Navy as honor, courage, and commitment. No one understood that more than Private First Class Jack H. Lucas. Enlisting in the Marines at just 14 years of age, Jack went on to fight for America in the trenches of Iwo Jima during World War II. And it was in those trenches where Lucas showed honor and courage, using his body to shield his fellow service members from two en enemy grenades. Jack's commitments to his fellow, fellow service members, the Marines, and his nation, his courage on the high seas and down in the trenches will serve as an inspiration to the service members who will climb aboard. To the sailors and Marines who will call this ship home, we send you off with the prayers from a grateful community. You, the brave men and women who will face the unknown with courage and determination are the heart and soul of this vessel. To, the to your dedication to duty, your camaraderie, and spirit of teamwork will be the driving force behind the USS Jack Lucas's success. And to the officers, sailors, engineers, and everyone who has contributed to making this extraordinary ship, America is truly grateful. Your hard work and commitment have brought us to this moment, and your legacy will sail on in every wave, reminding the world of our Navy's strength and our nation's resolve. May she always find her way home. May her crew return safely after every mission. Thank you. And may God bless the USS Jack H. Lucas and all who sail aboard her. Fair winds and following seas. Thank you, Representative Castor. Ladies and gentlemen, Admiral Darrell Cottle. Thank you, Matt, and for that, uh, process that, that we've gone through so far. I know it's warm. We're going to get through this. It's going to get a lot busier, trust me. Good morning, Tampa. And the crew of the Jack H. Lucas, what a beautiful and hot, great Navy day. And it is my honor and privilege to be here today to join you for the commissioning of this powerful warship. I, I want to welcome and give my sincere thanks to several people joining us here. Our ship sponsors, Mrs. Ruby Lucas and Mrs. Kathy Reynolds. Mr. L yep. Mr. Lewis Lucas and all the Lucas family here today to our matrons of honor, Congresswoman Castor, Congresswoman Lee, Congresswoman Luna, a lot of Congresswomen. Thank you, ma'am. Mayor Castor from Tampa, Undersecretary of the Navy, Raven, 
Mayor Roth, Colonel Barnum, thank you, sir. You honor us. Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, Rees, thank you for what you said. It was really meaningful. The commissioning committee, state of Florida officials, representative, fellow flag and general officers, distinguished guests, Ms. Wilkinson and our partners in industry, family, friends, and shipmates. Man, what a group. Thank all of you for being here on this momentous occasion and even more evidence of the special bond the Navy has with the state of Florida and proof that Tampa is a military city supporting our joint forces from Central Command and Special Operations Command. Your presence and enthusiasm for the military defines our extraordinary camaraderie, our teamwork, and our special relationship. Now for the crew, what you're doing in preparation and execution has been nothing short of amazing, truly remarkable and unprecedented. For those who don't know, new construction ships typically are allotted around 120 days to accomplish a series of certifications and preparations for leaving the shipbuilding facility and being introduced to the fleet. The All-Americans on board Jack H. Lucas signed for the ship on 6 July, immediately began damage control certifications, and a quick 77 days later completed 100% of the crew certification and sell away requirements, achieving a 98% on their light off assessment, the highest score observed by any new construction ship in over five years. And for any of those who've been through that, they're not giving that away. Captain Brett Oster, commanding officer, had one mission, keep Jack on track. Brett, your team answered the call every step of the way. With every challenge came a victory, one and done. It's a great work, Captain. Your leadership has made all the difference. My charge to you and your team is to keep that tenacity, that toughness and grit going because the challenges will keep coming. It will be hard, but I know you and the 330 of the Navy's finest sailors are the team to do it. Your namesake, 17-year-old Medal of Honor winner Jack H. Lucas, carried that same fiery passion with him throughout World War II and later passed it on while training young Army soldiers at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, who would go to fight in other conflicts like Vietnam. Your job is to make this ship as indestructible as her namesake and to sell it boldly as the 10 canned sailors in World War II. When Admiral Burke christened the first ship of this proud class of destroyers, the USS Arleigh Burke, on July 4, 1991, he said, may this ship do her duty for many years and may she have good luck in all of her endeavors. That same ship has been in service for over 32 years still operating for deployed in our European theater of operation today. As this first flight three, your ship will not only be the most capable surface combatant ever built with a Spy-6 radar, the Aegis Baseline 10 combat system, and a new electric plant integrated seamlessly into an already highly capable platform, you will start that proud journey today, which will last well into the 2060s and beyond. Such an evolution of the DDG-51 class would be impossible without the shipbuilders of Huntington Ingalls Industries and the Pascagoula community. The Flight 3 represents the dedication of the commitment of our sailors, our shipbuilders, our designers, and engineers who leverage, enable, and multiply the skill and innovation of our shipyards and industry partners to deliver with a commitment and promise to the American people that Jack Lucas will sell proudly to keep the seas free and open for all. As Secretary Carla del Torres recently said, as he called for a new maritime statecraft, quote, we should leverage the tremendous advantages we uniquely enjoy in innovation and technology, particularly in the maritime domain. Well, team, this fine warship is the lethal and demonstrative manifestation of the Secretary's words. It is now up to the 330 sailors, the fearless warriors before me, to take this piece of metal of almost 10,000 tons, the hundreds of miles of fiber optic cable and piping systems, into combat, 
designed to decisively win our nation's wars. For the team aboard Jack, Jack H. Lucas, I know you can do it, and I thank you for your service. May God bless our country. May God bless all of you and your families and the many voyages and the victories to come. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce our keynote speaker, a true friend and mentor of mine, the 34th Undersecretary of the Navy, the Honorable Eric Rabin. The Undersecretary previously served as the Majority Clerk of the Senate Defense Appropriations Subcommittee, where he managed a budget of over $700 billion in annual spending in defense and intelligence portfolios. He now serves as the Navy's Chief Operating Officer Chief Management Officer, as well as the Principal Advisor to the Secretary of the Navy, Carlos Del Toro. Please join me in welcoming the Honorable Eric Raven. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, it is a great Navy day. It is also a special Tampa day. And so I'm going to keep this moving, just like when this ship joins the fleet, she's going to keep moving. So in a few minutes, we're going to commission the USS Jack H. Lucas and bring the world's most advanced destroyer into the active service of the U.S. Navy's fleet. This accomplishment alone is enough to warrant this week's very fitting celebrations. However, today is about so much more than adding another ship to the fleet. Mrs. Lucas, Mrs. Reynolds, we did it. Today is the manifestation of our Department of the Navy's core values of honor, courage, and commitment. Starting with this very impressive ship behind me and her even more impressive namesake, today we are surrounded by powerful examples of why our nation, its naval forces, and our communities are so special. As many of you know, a ship's name is significant. The Navy names ships after people, ideas, and places that we want to honor. Specifically, we name destroyers for heroes, and this ship is for a hero of our naval services, Marine Corps Private First Class Jack H. Lucas. Jack lived an absolutely incredible life. He was a legendary figure who embodied our core values, and the title hero does not even suffice. Jack was only 17 year old, years old when he acted courageously and sacrificed himself to save his fellow Marines. Not many 17-year-olds faced with a split-second life-or-death decision that affects not only themselves, but their comrades as well. His actions on February 20th, 1945, proved that Jack was not only indestructible, but inherently selfless, noble, and always faithful. Today, Jack H. Lucas's legacy is cemented and forever connected with the sailors who will crew this ship. They now have a personal and enduring relationship with one of the nation's most honored Marines. From the colors on the ship's crest to its illustration of the Battle of Iwo Jima, Marines raising the flag atop Mount Sarabaji to the motto, sailors will forever be linked to their sister service, proudly wearing ball caps and patches bearing the name of the indestructible Marine, Jack H. Lucas, who embodied the finest of Marine Corps traditions. Semper Fidelis, always faithful. With this ship, her crew and our naval forces will be at the tip of the spear, upholding our enduring commitment to providing security and protecting our way of life. The United States is a maritime nation. Our welfare is inextricably linked to the sea. This port of Tampa itself sees nearly 100 million tons of cargo transported, around 3,000 vessels, and nearly half a million passengers per year. And the sea enables the global economy as well. 90% of global trade travels by sea. $5.4 trillion of annual US commerce and 31 million American jobs depend on, upon ocean-going trade. Undersea cables transmit 95% of international communications and $1 trillion in financial tr transactions every single day. Throughout history, we've seen that nations who are a great naval power are also a great maritime power, showing strength in commercial shipbuilding and global shipping. Last month, Secretary Del Toro called for a new, bold maritime statecraft during his speech at Harvard University, emphasizing that 
and I quote, the maritime industry is a strategic sector critical to our economic and our national security. Indeed, our Navy is more important than ever to this concerted effort to increase our strategic advantage at sea and improve our naval shipbuilding and repair industry. And it's ships like the USS Jack H. Lucas that will allow our Navy to protect these economic interests and advance our global security. Commissioning the Jack H. Lucas means that we continue to deliver fast, agile, and network surface combat combatants to the Navy. The Jack H. Lucas is built to fight. It's fast, maneuverable, versatile, and a lethal ship, capable of tackling any mission it's given. It will keep the Navy and Marine Corps adaptive and ready and uphold our commitment to maintaining the free flow of commerce, deterring military aggression, and facilitating quick responses to natural disasters across the globe. The commissioning of a United States naval warship is a key milestone, not only for the hull and its crew, but also for the ship's sponsor, or in this case, the sponsors. These sailors in this ship will have the enduring support and partnership of Miss Ruby Lucas and Miss, Miss, Mrs. Kathy Reynolds. Mrs. Lucas, you are the perfect complement to Jack. Always faithful. You've continued your husband's commitment to the Marine Corps and to service, ensuring that the story of Jack Lucas and those who served with him are not lost, and that all who served and all who serve are cherished for the contribution that they make. You have demonstrated tremendous honor, courage, and commitment. Through your efforts, you've ensured that the world will not forget. Our children and our children's children will remember Jack's life and legacy and endeavor to safeguard the principles that we hold dear. Pride, patriotism, and your love for this country are just a few of the characteristics that co come to the future USS Jack H. Lucas and will carry forward for many years to come. Mrs. Mrs. Kathy Reynolds, your support of this ship and its crew carries forward your vision of unleashing the incredible potential of our nation and of every American. Your philanthropic achievements echo the lessons of Jack Lucas's legacy. Let us make more Americans indestructible in their own right by arming them with the tools they need to prevail in an uncertain world. Certainly that's something Jack would have appreciated. Your drive and your determination will continue to be an inspiring example for the sailors who sail on this ship. It's said that the character and spirit of the ship's sponsor serves to enrich, guide, and protect her ship and her crew. How fortunate the USS Jack H. Lucas will be to benefit from two patriots with tremendous character and from the perspective and commitment you will bring to you, your role as sponsors. The Jack H. Lucas and all who will sail her are lucky to have you as sponsors. We're proud to call you plank owners and you are forever honorary members of the first crew. And I hope that this journey has been exciting and I look forward to your future endeavors with her. And for the sailors, the crew and the officers of the Jack H. Lucas. You have been entrusted with a modern marvel. I have the full confidence that you are trained, manned, and equipped to manage every situation thrown your way, in times of conflict and in times of peace, around the world and around the clock. Our Navy and Marine Corps are present, protecting our way of life, and now we have another ship in the fleet doing just that. Thank you again for the honor of being here today for hosting this outstanding event and for all the support that you provide to our nation and our armed forces. And let us welcome USS Jack H. Lucas to the fleet. Thank you, Secretary Raven. Sir, I would be honored if you would now place Jack H. Lucas in commission. I'm gonna call an audible here. Sergeant Major, can you come up here? Right, please do the honors. All right, here we go. On behalf of the President of the United States and for the Secretary of the Navy, I hereby place United States ship Jack H. Lucas in commission. May God bless and guide the warships and all who shall sail in her. Hoorah. Sir. Executive Officer, hoist the colors and commission pendant. Aye, sir. Very well. 
ship's company. Attention. The commissioned pennant in professional national navies began to take form late in the 17th century. All ships at that time were sailing ships, and it was often difficult to tell a naval ship from a merchantman. Navies began to adopt long, narrow pennants to be flown by their ships at the mainmast head to distinguish themselves from merchant ships. The commission pennant will fly continuously until the ship is decommissioned. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. I direct your attention to the ship's mast as we hoist the colors and commission pennant. Quartermaster, hoist the colors and commission pennant. Captain, the colors and commission pennant are flying proudly over USS Jack H. Lucas. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. I will now read my orders from Commander Naval Military Personnel Command 2, Captain Brett Oster, United States Navy, subject, Bupers Order Number 1581 of 7 June 2021. When directed by reporting senior, detach from present duty and report to pre-commissioning unit Jack H. Lucas as commanding officer. Upon commissioning of Jack H. Lucas, report for duty as commanding officer. Admiral Caldwell, sir, United States ship Jack H. Lucas is in commission and I am in command. Executive officer, set the watch. Aye, sir. Very well. Detail for march. Officer of the deck, set the first watch. Aye, aye, sir. The officer of the deck is the commanding officer's direct representative, and while on watch, is responsible for the safe operation of the ship and crew. The long glass is the traditional symbol of an officer of the deck's authority in a ship of the line. We are honored to have Jack Lucas's eldest son, Mr. Lewis Lucas, with us today. He will pass the long glass to our first officer of the deck, Lieutenant Daniel McCormick from Middletown, New Jersey. The Petty Officer of the Watch is Chief Sonar Technician Aaron Mertes from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. The Messenger of the Watch is Bosun's Mate Third Class Lloyd Tillman from Mount Vernon, New York. And the Bosun's Mate of the Watch is Bosun's Mate Second Class Victor Mejia from Dumfries, Virginia. Set the watch on deck, section one. Sir, the watch is set. Very well. Detail, board, march. Captain, the watch is set. Very well. The spirit of a U.S. Navy warship is the embodiment of her sponsors. As you may have noticed, we have two sponsors and therefore twice the enthusiasm enjoyed by most ships. Miss Ruby Lucas and Miss Catherine Reynolds christened the ship in Pascagoula, Mississippi on March 26, 2022, and they imbued the ship and crew with their charm and grace. Ladies, 
I would be honored if you would give the order to man our ship and bring her to life. They will give a few words before they give that order. Thank you. Good morning, distinguished guest, and thank you for the honor to serve as a sponsor of the USS Jack H. Lucas. Today we honor the legacy of Jack Lucas and all of those in uniform who serve America and the defense of liberty. I'm pleased to be joined by my husband, Wayne, and my dear friend and matron of honor, Barbie Albritton, a beloved philanthropic and civic leader from Washington, D.C. And for me personally, today's commissioning ceremony has special significance. My father, Anthony Brescia, served more than 25 years in the U.S. Navy and was a distinguished Navy Golden Glove boxing champion and also a scratch golfer for the Navy. My father would have been so proud of this moment for his country, for the U.S. Navy, and yes, for his daughter. We are certain that the USS Jack H. Lucas and its crew will go on to make history and earn its own recognition for valor and courage in defense of our nation. Thank you and God bless America. Good morning. Oh, it's such it's such a joy to look out and see all these people that come to honor my husband. That is wonderful. I want to thank each and every one of y'all for coming. And I appreciate you. I know a lot of you come from a long way. And I love each one of you for coming today. This is such an impressive ship and deserving of the name it bears. And Jack would be so happy today his sacrifice, his patriotism, and his legend he lives on in the high seas as our Navy fights American's enemies. God bless the U.S. Jack H. Lucas and all who sail on her, and God bless America! <laughs> all right, ladies, you can do that right there. Officers and crew, of the USS Jack H. Lucas, man our ship and bring her to life.